Here we go. We're gonna zero I.O. Um, once we do that, we will connect pressure wire, uh, turn the wire on. Now the wire is in the left main, we're gonna equalize. Once we equalize, we wait for a PD over PA to reach one, then we switch to um, RFR. And once we get that value to reach to an equalization or near equalization, uh, we, will record, we will advance the wire. So now we are uh, down the distal two-thirds of the LED, or at least six centimeters away from the, uh, from the guide. Um, it's time now to um, record your first measurement, which would be RFR. Simply just hit RFR, wait for a few beats, and then you will get your measurements. And here we go. Your RFR is 0.97. There's no epicardial disease uh, or significant epicardial disease or stenosis in the LED. It's now time to perform my CFR IMR measurements, or at least the first phase of calculating CFR by doing resting um, thermodilution cardiac outputs or uh, coronary flows. So uh, CFR IMR, I switched, and now I'm ready. As I mentioned before, it's good time now to do um, hygiene because obviously the catheter now might have some blood that had came back from um, through the wire back. And then if that's the case, we need to make sure that there is um, um, uh, equalized temperature. Uh, the, temp the temperature here is saying there is a negative 0 0.5 degrees uh, difference. You can press zero temperature and the temperature will zero for you in a second. And now, this, the temperature is zeroed after I flush the contrast. I'm ready to go. There is no discrepancy between the um, coronary and the guide. Life is good. It's time to do the injections. I will show you how we're going to do the injections. This is the setup. Um, the setup is very simple. Um, you could use different syringes, but then you'll run the risk of, um, of um, um, pushing or injecting air bubbles because there are some air bubbles here and uh, if you were trying to de-air you might lose some of your volume and obviously you don't want to have any air in the stopcock for that reason i have this assembly which is a 20 cc syringe um, and a 3 cc syringe and this will, will serve as a reservoir tank to fill my syringe with each injection this assembly could work with assist and could work with manifold it doesn't matter once you hook it up now we're ready, um, you have pressure on, uh, on the monitor and your syringe is full. This is the motion. On, fill the syringe, and then now the syringe is ready to go into the guide. You can turn this on to the patient and then you inject. And let's demonstrate that. All you need is forceful injections through the, uh, through the guide. And once you're done with your injection, make sure that your stopcock is back to uh, transducing aortic pressure because it's very important for you to have a consistent uh, PA um, and PD pressures at all time. So let's go live. We're gonna go to CFR and IMR, and we're ready for an injection. Hit start, and then inject now. I'm injecting, and here we go. Your first injection is in. Get ready for the other one, and here we go. Second injection is in. Fill the, fill the syringe, and you're ready. And once you get the reading, it's now ready to inject, and we injected. And the goal here is to have three homogeneous uh, readings on the resting phase. And once we're done with that, we go to the hyperemic. Adenosine is, 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 is running. We have hyperemia now with the five uh, uh, criteria that we talked about before. I'm going to induce hyperemia and um, click here, and that's what I will do. Um, and then we will start um, injecting in a second. So inject now. Again, forceful, make sure your wire didn't migrate or didn't move uh, throughout the injections. And obviously you could see the difference with, uh, with the waveform. This is the second injection now. And again, the goal is three homogeneous. And if you look at PDF over PA, it's had dropped significantly. And then you have ventricularization. And this is our third injection. And let's see what values we get. If we are happy with the values, we will take them. They're all within the same range. You can now replace or edit or delete. Uh, you, all you need to do is you click on the value um, and then you can delete it or replace it. And if you are happy with all the values, you just need to hit end. Once the case is over, 
we're done. Um, now, because we still have some hyperemia going on, I, would, I, I, I usually don't take the FFR value uh, calculated with the injections because sometimes your PD over PA is, um, is obviously um, not consistent at all times, especially during injections. So what I'd rather to, to do is I go live, and once I go live, I'll switch to FFR, and then I will record while I still have a Denison running for uh, 10 seconds at least, and then once that's done, full screen, very good. I will um, stop the uh, recording at night, 9, 10, and now I have my RFR, I have my um, resting phase um, uh, flow, I have my hyperemic phase flow, and I have a clean um, FFR. If I don't like where the FFR has been measured, you could always move the cursor back and forth, um, and then you try to get into a, a more uh, stable area. Once that's done, you want to review the numbers. Obviously, that's easy. Uh, you look for the measurements that you did. And here we go. This is one of the measurements that we just obtained. Uh, again, FFR is 0.84. I wouldn't go by this. I will go by the value that I recorded at the end. It's more stable. But here, we have a CFR of 1.4, IMR of 66. Uh, um, technically, this is a case of uh, CMD. RRR is also consistent that it's low, it's less than 3.5 which means that the resistance throughout the whole cycle was abnormal. Um, but someone will ask me, where do you look for normal? When, when do you look for corrected? Uh, obviously here the FFR is 0.84 saying here. And I, even if I correct that to a, an FFR of one and a PD over PA of one, I still have an, a very abnormal CFR and a very abnormal IMR. And with that, this case uh, demonstrated pure CMD.